So today's video is all about resurfacing your deck. I'm going to show you the techniques for removing this deck so we don't damage this, the, the structure underneath. And that's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of money. So if you're like most people, you're living in a house that's got a pre-existing deck that was built with great intentions, but not with the greatest of skill level. So we're dealing with a deck today that's as dead as the plant that was sitting on it. Not nice to look at. The sad thing is, is the substructure of this deck, I can tell just by looking at it, still nice and solid, but everything on top is completely rotten. It hasn't been managed properly, it hasn't been dealt with for the weather, and it wasn't built right so that it could dry, and it's just been rotting where it sits for the last 15 years. Such a shame. So we're going to get this all taken care of and removed so that we can rebuild it and have a beautiful place to hang out again. One of the things you got to take real care with when you're in this situation is not to get carried away. It's real easy to pull out a sledgehammer and the crowbar and start ripping everything apart. But remember, we want to reattach a new deck to the same structure. So we're going to have a bit of a labor intensive process. Bye bye. So we found out really quickly here when we pushed the railing over that they were using the wrong size screws to build everything. So let's find out if they put the floor down with the right screws. Nope. <laughs> ah, okay. So this wood is inch and a quarter, which means this screw should be at least a two and a half inch. All right. You want it to be one and a half times longer than the material you're attaching, and that's just not cutting it. So these are short. This is uh, pretty much a trim screw. This is designed to put, you know, these little trim boards into a frame. Uh, Boy, if they built the whole deck this way, they've actually done us a really big favor because that'll be a lot easier on my drill to pull all these screws out. What I want to do, oh, now that's just spinning, and that's just spinning. So I don't know if that's in the wood or if it's rotten underneath or if it's just these screws, oh, occasionally are going to grab. Wow. We might be in a situation where we're going to be able to just yeah we'll try to pull as many as we can i think we're going to be using the crowbar to lift it out because of that situation that means that the top of all these joists are going to be compromised so when we put our new decking lumber down we're actually going to have to go back with a three inch screw so that we're going past the compromised lumber into solid meat again and that'll solve your problem and enable you to save all of the substructure here wow yeah yeah that was really done well this is a great way to have a look this wood under here aside from a little bit of organic material that builds up which is somewhat normal it's actually in pretty good shape and you'll see all of these screws that are broken off oh yeah yeah there's a lot of people out there that think that the acq screw which is a deck screw is going to last forever this is a great reminder that it's not. If you don't install it properly and you don't treat your deck, the screws will rust out and rot and they'll just be useless. This is actually kind of amazing. To be honest with you, when I lifted this up, I was expecting to see a lot more rot on the surface of this deck. This is a testimony to how good quality a pressure treated substructure is. This was built wrong. It was holding moisture. It wasn't being able to dry and it still isn't rotted out the top of this wood. Like that can still hold a screw. That's amazing. I'm really pleased with that result. Now they only use a two by six frame. So there is a bit of a bounce to this deck. So we're going to do a little bit of shoring up just to get rid of the bounce. And that way we can save this lumber. That was coming in. So just a quick tip, we're going to actually cut some vapor barrier plastic that goes underneath this deck. We're going to open it up as we go so we're walking on, you know, something that's not going to be full of mud. 
And then when we're done building this little project, we're gonna leave it there and open it up so that we have a vapor barrier under our deck to help control a lot of the ground moisture that's gonna come up. The, the greatest enemy you have when you're building a deck close to the ground is what I call the sauna effect. It's because of the sun heating down and it draws all the moisture out of the dirt and it pulls it into the wood because it really overheats underneath there. So if you don't have a lot of airflow underneath your, your porch or your deck, when you're close to the ground, you're gonna rot prematurely. So by laying down a plastic ground sheet, you'll knock about 90% of the moisture that's being pulled up underneath that ground. It gives your deck a lot more time to release that moisture back into the atmosphere so that it has a drying period every night as well. And it's not gonna be wet in the morning when it starts again. That's where the problem comes in. If it's wet when the day starts, you're done. You're gonna rot that thing out in five years. as well. If, uh, if this looks level to you, uh, I'm going to suggest you go seek some medical attention. Uh, <laughs> this is extremely brutal. I'm not sure what they were using here outside of just Oh, I don't even have a clue. It's attached to the house, that's level. The last section here falls away. This piece here seems to be pretty consistent with the front rim joists. And then the middle collapses because it's carrying all the weight because of the way they built this thing. Again, this is the cost of trying to frame without lumber long enough to do the job. It's just bizarre to me why they didn't just go from that point to that point. This is a mission that's successful. We pulled off most of the deck boards here. The way we're doing it, we're leaving our wood intact and it's in good, good condition. However, it's obvious that this was a do-it-yourselfer project. There is a lot of structural issues here. We're going to have to make a list, figure out a plan to restore all of that before we can redeck. Uh, not surprising. Just by looking at it when we first arrived, we knew there was going to be some surprises. Um, this is not disappointing. So as a homeowner, if you open up your deck and you see something completely messed up like this, <laughs> you might feel a little overwhelmed. But the reality is, is um, the basics of structure are quite simple and you can make a few adjustments to something even as dilapidated as this to bring it back to life. So in our next video, we're going to show you how to reframe your deck, but just make your structural changes so you can save it and not have to get involved with ripping it all out and starting all over from scratch.